Hello, I was asked a while ago could I do a video on panoramic lenses on gas masks so I thought yeah sure why not um, I'll also get round at some point to doing a video on the different types of lenses gas masks have so we can do a comparison on all the types and what's better for certain scenarios but as far as I understand the definition of a panoramic lens it's basically where you have one big wide lens that covers most of the face of the mask rather than having two separate eyepieces now I'm not, there's a kind of some technicalities on panoramic lenses because lots of old industrial masks have what I'd class as a panoramic lens but some people argue that they're not so whether or not you're just going to sort of say that's a military terminology or whatever I'm just going to include any mask in this video I can think of that's got a big wide panoramic lens now my MCU2 also has one of those, the MCU2P but I've not got this out for this video, I've got a couple of other examples but as I said for me I'd class a panoramic lens as one big lens that covers most of you know your eyesight rather than having two smaller lenses so let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages to this system so the obvious advantage is you have a much better field of view having a big wide open area to see out of is in theory better than having two eyepieces where you've kind of got a bit of a binocular effect but as I've said before with um, respirators there's the misconception that lots of films and games have that if you look through a gas mask it's kind of like you're looking through two little holes in um, something and that's all you can see that's not really the case it's more like if you do that um, you know with your hands where you get to the middle somebody was telling me this in the comments and I think it's a really good way of sort of doing it if you do that with your hands where it gets to the middle the, both the hands goes together and you can see through them so respirators aren't really all that important to have a panoramic lens in terms of seeing you know between the eyes because you can see that well enough anyway it's more I find a lot of panoramic lenses I think they're designed so you can see more the other way or at least see more down or up but again it totally depends on how the shape of the lens has been done anyway and on a lot of masks I find you can, don't get a better field of view of a panoramic lens than a non-panoramic lens it's just rather than having a bit of ghosting in the middle of your eyes you actually just get um, you know like very clear but anyway let's put on this Scott GSR the mask that you and I have complained about enough times And I'll do the straps up and then I'll talk a bit about panoramic lenses and why I'm not a massive fan of them and I don't think they're that useful, at least not on military masks. Right, okay, so here you go. That's the GSR on and basically, yeah, I can see perfectly in front of me. That's not an issue. Now, one of the issues is with a panoramic lens, and this is the issue the S6 has despite having two separate eyepieces, is that when you get to about this area of the lens, your vision gets a bit distorted because of the curvature of the material. Now I assume this would probably be polycarbonate or a similar sort of plastic, but the idea is it's meant to be quite tough, and one of the reasons that panoramic lenses were never really put on military masks at an earlier point in history is that you don't want the eyepieces to be too big if they were made from glass or weak plastic, because that would be more prone to shattering, whereas if you have something like polycarbonate it's a very tough material, because polycarbonate is what riot shields are made out of. So, yeah, the advantage is, really the only advantage is, as far as I can think of a panoramic lens, is you can have something where you can see directly in front of you and there's no ghosting. That's about it. Now, some more competent masks are kind of designed so the entire thing is a panoramic lens. So what that means is basically where you kind of make the entire mask out of clear material and then you also get a really good field of view because not much is being cut off from your vision. Now this Sieb Gorman respirator is kind of a bit like that and also a bit not. So put that on. Now I'm not going to put this on properly for the video because I'm not going to bother putting the supplied air through it or um, you know powered air, but positive air pressure. But yeah, this gives you quite a good field of view as you can imagine. Um, because obviously you've got a big front section. The issue is, again, this is quite tough, thick plastic, I guess because it was originally designed as a firefighter's mask, it needed to be thick, tough plastic. The reason it's steaming up, if you haven't seen my videos on it, is because the exhale valve won't open until there's enough air pressure to force it to open, so it's meant to be used with supplied air, or a positive air pressure, this mask. But Again, the field of view is quite good. I guess if you're claustrophobic, you'd feel less claustrophobic in a mask like this, but personally I find, you know, this is a bit irrelevant, especially because lots of these um, big polycarbonate visors end up make, adding a lot more weight to the mask that wouldn't be there anyway. So if you consider that 
to a lot of other masks, I'd rather have, you know, a lighter weight rubber for the face piece with two good eyepieces on the front. Here's the BEM 4GP, and from what I understand, this is quite an early example of a military mask that did this. I think probably one of the earliest non sort of military mask to do it might have been the Sieb Gorman Vista Vision, but there's probably others that predate that as well. But here we go, here's the BEM 4GP. I don't know if I've undone the straps enough here, I think I'm going to have to pull it down on my head that way. So, yeah, fairly good panoramic visor again, but really I don't think the field of view is massively more. Apart from a bit of the peripheral vision here, I don't think the field of view is actually necessarily loads more than you'd get with a standard respirator, which is kind of my problem with these. You've got something that's kind of completely unnecessary. Now, one of the big drawbacks to a panoramic lens is you can't aim a rifle with it anywhere near as easily. Some of the very good respirators with smaller lenses have the lenses set up like the SHMS and other optical masks. So looking for a rifle scope or a rifle sight is very easy because the eyepieces look straight ahead. Where these are curved, you will never get a scope or anything to sit flush with the eye. Especially if the eye relief isn't very good on the scope and you have to get your eye very close to it, you're not going to manage it with a visor like this. Now one of the things you can probably notice is that my eyes are actually really far back from the visor in a mask like this, which isn't good. Even if the straps are done up quite tight. And that's just simply how the mask design works. Now with some of the very other good respirators, your eyes sit very very close to the actual eyepieces of the mask which means you actually get a better field of view, in my opinion, than um, a panoramic lens mask. So, let me demonstrate that now. So basically, I can't see anything lower than this point, which you can imagine, the oral nasal cup uh, goes into my vision. Now, that's another funny thing, actually, of a mask like this, is despite the fact it's got a panoramic lens, so I don't get any ghosting in the middle of my vision, because the oral nasal cup takes up so much in my vision anyway, I get ghosting because of that. So they might as well just have had the rubber actually seal there, have two separate eyepieces. So anyway, let me get a mask that gives a very good field of view that actually doesn't rely on having, um, you know, one panoramic lens but has two separate eyepieces. Okay, so here's a funny example. Here's a Chinese FMJ05 respirator. And I think this size is slightly too small for me, but regardless, my field of view from this is almost identical to the um, M4GP except for obviously a bit of ghosting in the middle and I'm sure if I was to try and aim a rifle eyepieces like this would be actually a lot better than um, with the panoramic masks if I actually use something like the Forshida F2 I think I'd get an even better field view but that's quite buried in my cupboard so I don't want to dig it out right now but yeah so the issue seems to be to me really of panoramic lens masks that for a military use, they don't offer any real advantage you wouldn't get with one of these, because the field of view isn't all that much better, if at all better than some other kind of designs I've seen. It's probably more prone to breaking, even with stronger modern materials, and you can't aim rifles as well with it, which is a bit of a problem in my opinion. Now where I think panoramic lenses would be very good is for civilian and military masks, uh, sorry, civilian and industrial masks, simply because those are things where you might want a bit more field of view, and I imagine for civilians, they're going to be less panicked if they have a um, better field of view than something that might be a bit claustrophobic for them, because civilians aren't going to really need to shoot guns, so who cares, you know, if they've got something that's not as good for aiming a rifle with. So, there's always, you know, that. So, this is one of the reasons why I really don't see the point of panoramic lenses, you know, Actually, saying that, an early example of a panoramic lens of sorts might be what the British civilian mask has from World War II, where it has the uh, rectangular sort of celluloid thing in the middle. That's a fairly good field of view on that one, I suppose, for what it is. But yeah, there you go, that's my opinion on the uh, panoramic lenses. Yeah, you've certainly got a lot more plastic there, haven't you? You could potentially see out of, but... You know, what's the point? Now, if somebody made a mask like this with a panoramic lens on it, but then they made all the rubber out of some sort of slightly semi-transparent silicone, that would probably be the way to do it so you could have a really, really good field of view. 
but as it stands I don't think they offer any advantages miles like this over miles like this to be honest I reckon the two good eyepieces is the way to go still for most respirators